Today I will show you how to fix the value dial on the Roland Phantom XR. What happens is it's um, being non-responsive, behaving erratically and skipping, or even going backwards when you're turning forwards. So I will show you how to fix this now. Before you get started, discharge any static electricity by touching a grounded object such as a tap or use proper grounding equipment. Also avoid unnecessarily touching any of the ICs inside of the unit. To disassemble the unit, remove the ears on both sides. Take out the screws and take the ears off. Then remove the center screw on the front top of the unit. Remove the four screws at the back of the unit. Remove the single screw on each side of the unit. Lift off the lid. Remove the three knobs on the front of the unit. They will just pull out. Remove the three screws on the top front of the unit. Remove the three screws on the underside front of the unit. Pull the wires out of the sockets. You might have to use a, a flathead screwdriver to pull out the socket on each side. Gently lift it off until it comes off. Pull the face forward. Loosen the nut of the rotary dial, which is the value dial in the center front of the unit. This is the part that we're going to fix. Take the nut out. Remove the little chip with the rotary coder attached. I'm about to show you how to desolder the rotary encoder from, from the chip. And then I'm going to fix the rotary encoder. And by fix, I mean clean it. This rotary encoder is not really intended to be opened up, but I'm going to open it up anyway. It's not that difficult. I'm going to give it a really good clean inside and in most cases this is going to fix it and it will work just fine afterwards. Use the soldering equipment available to you to desolder the rotary coder from the little chip. Depending on the quality of your equipment this could be easy or it could be somewhat more difficult. You can use various methods to try and get all this order to come off. Once the solder's off, pull the rotary coder off the PC board. Bend those metal legs up so that you will be able to pull the bracket off that's holding the base of the encoder together. This is normally a throwaway part but we're gonna try and fix it. So you might have to spread that metal piece a little bit apart so that you'll be able to pull it out. 
once you've sufficiently bent them back and loosened it pull the bottom and top part away from each other you'll be able to pull the top bracket out inside these are the the components of the rotary encoder be very careful with them they're very fragile items make sure you don't lose anything to clean the insides of the rotary dial I recommend you use a specific cleaning fluid that is safe for electrical equipment that won't cause any deterioration or corrosion down the line. I'm using this one. You don't have to use this brand, you can use any brand you like that is intended for this purpose. Use some electrical cleaning fluid and spray it onto the, de the devices inside. Then use a Q-tip if you have one and if you're cheap like me and you don't have one, wrap some paper around the matchstick and wipe the components. Wipe them carefully, make sure you don't damage anything. This part has very, very fine wires on it. Be extremely careful, they could easily catch and bend. And if you break one off, then that device is ruined and you'll have to buy a new one. Just be very careful and, and dab them carefully. Observe which directions the wires go and stroke them in such a way that they don't get bent. Clean all these other components, especially those contact components made of copper. Make sure they're nice and clean. Once everything is thoroughly cleaned, Make sure you put everything accurately back together. Shove the bracket back in over the, the dial shaft. Then put the base plate back on the bottom. And then the, the thing, the bracket that we spread when we took it off, you clamp that together again so that it'll hold on to the base plate and then use a screwdriver and push those metal pins those flat pins put them back snugly against the, the base plate of this rotary dial Give it a bit of a turn and see what it feels like. It, it should run smoothly and you should feel the increments of the rotary dial. Put it back on the PC board. Make sure you don't bend any of the pins when you're reinserting it. And then solder all the, mm -hmm. the pins and the, the two main legs back onto the PC board. 
then reassemble the unit in reverse order. Plug the unit in and test the dial. And as you can see, it's very smoothly going through all the menus one by one. And I'm also able to push the button in and make jumps of 10. Exactly as it should. This is success. Hopefully this fix will work out for you. If not, then you will have to replace the value dial. You can either replace the dial itself and solder it onto the PC board or you can replace the PC board with the dial already attached. These are the official replacement parts that you see here. The one on top is the rotary encoder already attached to the PC board as a single unit. This is an option also if you want to replace this without soldering because you will just have to attach it with the nut and close the unit back up. The one below is just the rotary encoder which you will have to solder on to the PC board that you already have. Roland doesn't actually sell parts to customers like us. They will tell you to go to an authorized serviceman which is going to charge you a million dollars. So they're not an option for us. So you're going to have to search the internet to find somebody, a third party supplier. They might even sell you official Roland parts. I don't know where they get them from, but they get them from somewhere. Such as this website or this one. And you can get the rotary encoder attached together with the chip on eBay, for instance, like here. Choose the one that you prefer or choose the one that you can find and put it into the unit and it'll work. You have reached the end of the video. Thanks for watching.